Okay, uh, I wanted to shoot some footage of basically doing some final highlighting, final touching up of some miniatures of a spearman group for my Kingdom of Men for Kings of War. These will be converted from uh, Warhammer Fantasy. I'll be taking these bases off and doing a multi-basing, which I shared in another video. Uh, I'm going to show you some gunmen here from the same army. They're going to have the same, uh, basically the same painting scheme. You can see the little, one of my favorite things on this army is, uh, or this unit is this uh, little monkey. You can see the little monkey down in there. It's basically a sharpshooter model. So uh, basically just did a, a rock and uh, some other accoutrement on there with uh, the flocking and uh, did a Luan base as I showed in another video. Uh, they turn out really well. This represents a, a horde of 20 um, based on the base size. So that's where we're going with these guys. It's going to be a similar paint scheme. Uh, so we have some uh, highlighting on the blue here. We'll do a lighter shade of blue and then um, what I'm getting ready to do is uh, add some white. And so the way this process works, and this is really geared towards uh, those of you out there who have stumbled onto my channel and are just starting to paint. You can see I come in with all the primary, the main colors. So we did the, the brown. I like to do different shades of brown if there's different types of brown. So if I did a brown hat, in this case I did like an olive drab color hat. Um, I like to do different shades of brown. So you should have at least four or five, six different shades of brown. Uh, this is like a leather brown. It's like a, got a little reddish to it. Um, there's different shades of greens that you can get. Uh, all the different type of what I would consider earth tones. Um, you know, as an example, I've got this is Russian uniform. I've also got brown violet. You see there's kind of a, a greenish tinge to it and what I do is just like uh, you know in my workshop with tools I basically buy tools as I need them and over time you just uh, build up a bigger and bigger collection uh, so you don't have to run out and buy you know you know 400 paints um, I guess a good tip would be you know you could buy a starter set of Vallejo they come with like primary colors, whites, blues, reds, and then buy shades uh, as you need them. And uh, I'll pan up real quick here with the camera. You can see my collection as it as it grows here. I've got this big tower of paints that I uh, have built up over the years. So uh, yeah, so you can kind of see where I'm headed here with uh, with the white. And I'm going to show you how I do my mixing. There's different ways to do it. You can use, uh, you know, disposable paper plates. I like, you can pick these up. At, I got these at Hobby Lobby. You can buy a whole package of them. I don't know, for five, ten bucks. And then, you know, once I accumulate several in a stack over here after each one of these slots gets used, I'll just throw them in some hot soapy water up in the kitchen, let them sit 30 minutes to an hour, drink a beer or two, and come back with this SOS pad or a Brillo pad or some type of uh, abrasive pad and just, you know, clean out the paint dry, let them sit out and air dry and you just reuse them. That's what's great about them. Uh, they're not disposable. So uh, I, I've used these, you know, 50, 60, 100 times, you know. And you see, it, there's almost like a coating on this plastic which really helps um, the paint, you know, get cleaned off and you can reuse them, which is another nice thing which I'm going to show you here in a second. I'll pan down here a little bit and show you that um, uh, basically how I mix. But basically, that's one of the biggest points in switching over from like a Citadel. And this is an older paint paint pot from Citadel, um, and where you pretty much have to dip into the cap, which is what I used to always do and which a lot of guys do when you shake them and you open this cap up and you dip your brush into the cap. 
Uh, sometimes the paint can be too thick, it can be too thin. Um, and you can use these, and another, you know, what I use for my Vallejo, you just pick up, you know, at any drugstore or pharmacy, you could pick up these little dropper droppers. And uh, I keep a separate glass over here. So one is a pre-rinse, one is a final rinse, and I just get into my final rinse, take a drop, drop or two into the paint and uh, thin it down. So what, I, what I'm basically doing with this is I will thin these down a little bit, still dip into the cap because I do want to use these up. They're decent, uh, they are good quality paints, it's just they're not as uh, efficient and they tend to dry up when you have the cap open um, uh, with, with these. So uh, not a terrible product, but uh, I would definitely, if you're, if you're really starting to get into this, I would just immediately gravitate to the Vallejo. A lot of hobby shops will carry this, a lot of online vendors will carry this where you can order the exact colors you want, you know, point and click, 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 and it'll come to your door two days later, three days later. Uh, again, this is the dropper bottles, and what I do also, guys, is, you know, stop by, if you're already a fisherman and you like to fish, uh, you probably have some sinkers, but go ahead and pick up these, you typically get them at a discount store, Walmart's dollar store sometimes have packages of bulk sinkers and you can pull these these caps off and I typically will use a paper towel I'll pull this this off and I will put a sinker inside this bottle now hopefully someday they will wise up and include a, a, a shaker in the bottom of these but uh, as of right now they don't really do that so you throw a cheap lead sinker in there it's a uh, surf, surfaces as or uh, uh, works as a shaker. So when you shake it, you can hear the clicking, 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 and it's going to keep my paint shaking up. And get my camera down here so we can get on this a little better. Adjust my lighting. Those of you who watch my videos, you know that I use a a circular fluorescent light, and I also use a regular incandescent. Uh, yellow bulb out of another light source and I also have a background light panel up on the ceiling which gives me my background lighting because the biggest thing with painting is you've got to have a lot of good light so I use a, a yellow I use a fluorescent on this side and the com combination of the two uh, shades really gives a lot of uh, clarity to what I'm painting so you can see here what I've done is I've gone through, I've hit all the primary colors, my main colors. Uh, I've done the uh, spear tip. Uh, I've done the spear in a different shade of brown than I did from the boots. Uh, basically just selected a variety of colors and then my main uniform colors, obviously, are the red and white. Then you go back in, either with a brown, and then uh, Vallejo makes a, it's an umber, which is a brown, and then we do a black. And I still uh, thin these down a little bit with some uh, with some droppers of water, okay? And it helps the product go a little farther and it helps lighten it up so it's not too dark. And if you've never used washes, you're going to have to get washes. You're going to have to use washes. And why? Why do we use washes? Okay, so I'm going to use another example here. This is uh, for my upcoming diorama. This is a uh, soldier from the US military and you can see he just has the primary colors I start with flesh then I'm coming in with his jacket colors here's my test piece and you can see after I have applied a wash and what the wash is going to do you can think of it like a thin ink uh, water soluble ink what it does guys for those of you that are new and just getting into this hobby it is getting into all these crevices and nooks and crannies and creating highlights. Uh, this one needs another shade, uh, wash. This I did a brown wash first to try to just bring out the rough details. I also did a reddish wash which is a sepia. Sepia. Okay, It's got more of a reddish tinge to it and I like to use that um, in, in larger miniatures like this and you can see where it brings out the flesh tones in the face it gets down into the mouth and the nose. So I did a brown and a sepia. Now probably when I get done with all of these minis and get ready to uh, put them together for my uh, 
for my diorama, I will come back and hit some of the jacket folds with a dark black wash just to really bring these folds out. It makes it look uh, uh, more realistic, obviously, and helps the high and low spots. Now, that's where we're headed with, with these guys because that's what I've done with these. I've done my basic uh, primary colors on all the main components, the flesh, Flesh is what I, I typically do first. Now, what I my philosophy is, I start with the wa the the flesh because it's the closest to the skin. Obviously, it is the skin, and then I work my way out. Okay, so I'm going to do a, do the jackets and the pants. Then I'll do the the accoutrement, the the little packs and the canteen. You can even come in like I've done with uh, just a little bit of uh, oh chain mail or bolt gun metal uh, and touch up just the little buttons at the, in the final stage. So we've done the, the gun, the gun butt, the body of the gun with bolt gun metal. Uh, I've even got the little buttons on the boots touched up with little fine details. There's still some more fine detailing I'm going to do on this mini. Uh, there's still some buttons I'll probably do with a black, uh, maybe a dark olive drab. Um, and then just work my way out. You can see I've done little buttons on the on his belt and basically you're starting in and working your way out is a good way to do it. Um, you know as you go on you just um, I, I personally I recommend these are the best. You've got to gravitate to these. They're a triangular shape uh, uh, post on, with the horse hair. They're genuine uh, sable hair you can see the great tip. I've used this brush as you can see by the different colors on the heft or on the shaft. Um, how long I've been using this, this is even starting to fade. Okay, so you can get a lot of life out of these brushes. You gotta obviously make sure you're cleaning them out good. Like I said, I like to do this two-stage wash, a pre and a post wash, getting all the paint out. And the other thing too is don't let it get completely dry and crusty on the, uh, get back in the shot here on the outer on the inner tips because the, the paint will collect up along here and starting to harden so I'll do maybe in a case of a 28 mil mini like this I'll do uh, a one hole maybe because like I do is I'll go through and do all the coats and I'll do all of the the pants and I'll do all the boots and I'll do all the flesh and work my way here so see I've done a initial flesh I'll have to point this up a little bit so he's got his flesh and then say like this is be my next stage where I've come in and I've done the jackets and I'll go down the whole line do jackets now the US Army use different uh, colors on their jackets so some of them will get olive drab some of them will get brown because I kind of want them to not look like well like it was in the real war they they kind of cobbled units together through the battles not everybody had based on the veterans versus the rookies would tend to have different uh, different uh, garments based upon when they were serving. If they did North Africa, up through Sicily, then they did Normandy or post-Normandy. Uh, so everyone wasn't perfectly matching in the unit. Uh, so uh, I'm kind of going to stick with that uh, for this for this particular diorama. So that's basically uh, my tip is to, uh, you know, when you're doing mass infantry battles like this, uh, something like uh, Kings of War um, and you're doing a, a lot of minis you can see I've got a whole list over here, over here and then I've got to pull the bases off and multi-base them so um, it, you ha do have to use what, what would be called uh, or termed as assembly line painting uh, all the white all the red so I've already done a dark wash on these I even did a gray wash on some spots so now what I have to do, since you, after you do the wash, especially like with like white and the brighter colors like red, what I will do is I'll come back in and do a highlighting. So you can really see it here on the arm. You can see where the gray and the dark washes that I've done have really done a great job of getting down in the lower spots. But now what I want to do is I want to come in with the white and I want to just come along with my brush and what I will be doing is just highlighting the high spots just a little bit to try to bring out that white um, 
and it adds that nice contrast to your model. So, um, and then the final stage, of course, is we will seal them with a good uh, matte varnish uh, so it protects the miniature. So when you're using it on the game board or if you're planning on building a diorama, it just helps your paint and your, uh, your, your artwork, which is what this is, it is a form of art, um, your art will, will last for years and years and years and years. Um, and the paint won't chip off ever if it, the mini's dropped. It's going to help protect it. So uh, that's where we're headed with this. So that's what, what I'm going to show you to do today. This is kind of the final stages. I'm doing the final touch-ups. I'll go through and I'll pick out fine little details like the the, uh, the blade on this, uh, this guy's thing. I'll probably do that in some sort of a some sort of a metallic, maybe a, a greenish metallic. I'll, I'll highlight the hilt with a little bit of uh, like chain mail, which is what I'm using until I use this up. Um, something that's a little bit brighter, uh, just to try to catch the eye, make it stand out. So here's what we're going to do. We'll take our white, which I've thoroughly shaken up. I'm going to put just a couple of drops, not a lot, just a little bit. Because you can always add more. And if I get caught up, uh, I need to go do something else. Um, I've not wasted as much paint. So I'll take, I'm going to take one drop, okay? I'm going to put one drop in there. One drop. Get the excess out. I'm going to take my trusty high-tech tool, the toothpick. All right, I'm going to come in. And I'm going to mix that together. Now, so those of you guys that are experienced painters, and a lot of you guys use the wet palette. I have a wet palette. I've used a wet palette. I'm not a huge fan of the wet palette. Uh, I guess if I, I can't sit down and do 50, 100 minis. Uh, I like to take breaks. Uh, like I've got a movie on over here in my my uh, computer station, uh, Das Boat. Uh, I've got a nice ice cold beer over here. I'll take a break. I'll paint some. I'll typically go through all of these. Uh, getting my, uh, what I basically just did is I took this paintbrush, put it in my mouth, got it nice and wet. The other tip is don't start with a dry brush. You know, get your, get your brush wet. Make sure the bristles are nice and wet. Uh, taking my cloth here. And then you can still see that there's, see it's not completely pointed, there's some loose hairs hanging out there. So what I'll do is I'll take the brush, put it in my mouth, and I will get that thing as fine as a pen point. Okay, so the, the two main brushes I'm going to use for fine detailing and for my, my general painting, there's two different sizes. You see this is the fine, this is basically a good medium brush. But you can still, even with this medium brush, the fine tip. And this is what I'm using 90% of the time is the regiment. Okay, and then I'll come in when I do the buttons, and the fine detailing is obviously it's uh, the Wargamer detail. So if you haven't used Army Painter brushes, I highly recommend them. Um, I love them. Then what I'll do is I'll go to the local hobby shop or Hobby Lobby, and I'll pick up some cheap some cheap brushes for doing my dry brushing. And you can see I don't, I'm not so content on cleaning those as much. And these broad, thick brushes like this, it's kind of hard to get all the paint out of the top of the bristles. But it doesn't really matter much because I'm kind of just using these to dry brush or to stipple, yeah. do stippling effects. Um, and the cheap brushes are good for doing, uh, like on my tank over there that I'm working on. For larger areas, you can use more of a, uh, where's one here, one of a medium brush, and this one I've actually cut down with a pair of scissors to do some stippling, which is a, like little uh, rust effects on my tank, you can get the different, you can buy these in a, usually a big package for pretty cheap, <coughs> and that's what I use for like uh, large, larger models when I'm putting on larger areas and painting, you don't really need the fine detail. You just need something that's inexpensive. I think these are still uh, these are still sable hair, but they're really cheap. These are more expensive, but 
they're the nuts and bolts. These are the, the paintbrushes I use. I'm going to use 90% of the time, as I said. So that's kind of what I do. I buy some cheap brushes for doing large areas and for dry brushing. And for my detailing and my bulk painting, I'm going with a more quality brush. That's really purpose built for doing uh, miniature and model painting. So again, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to just hit the high spots. And try to get this so it doesn't look as much gray. So I'm still getting that. It's a white uniform, but it's a little on the dingy side kind of effect. Um, get the cuff. So you're basically kind of looking down on this miniature and saying, uh, these are the high spots, this is the areas where the sun is going to be, the light's going to be hitting, and uh, you can go in and hit like the very top of his knee. Not usually the knee, because the knee's probably usually dirty. Like the top of his leg. I can get up a little higher on the shot here. Um, and that's pretty much where I'm going with this. It just takes practice, you know, when you first start out, you know, I've been painting miniatures for a long, long time, and uh, you get that paint uh, thickness just the way you like it. You know, not too thin, uh, just enough to try to just do my highlighting. I'll drag the brush along, as you can see, just to try to bring out some of those highlights so when you're on the tabletop, it creates that little variation in the color that makes it look more realistic and just makes it look more professional. Uh, and you'll be happy with it. You know, you'll look at the miniatures when you're done. It takes the time. So if you're in a hurry, if you're the type of person that's always in a hurry and doesn't have patience, uh, this can help teach you patience. And um, when you're done with the finished product, you're going to look at it and say, oh wow, this I'm really proud of this, or happy with this, and uh, something that you'll be complimented on, and uh, you'll, uh, you'll be glad and happy that you did it. So that's basically what I'm showing you here. I'm just coming in and just doing the highlights. So, and then you just work your way down the list, or down the line here, grab another mini, Come in, I'm going to start at the top of the shoulder where the sun is, the light is hitting his garment, and it's, uh, you know, dragging the brush, dragging the brush, dragging the brush, dragging it a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, we're talking about a dude that's been out on the battlefield and he's been fighting. Uh, it's almost like a, almost a little bit, almost like a light dry brush. I get the main part of the color. I stay in the shot here, guys. Sorry. Uh, and like on his hip, I'll drag that color across, and drag it out, drag it out, drag it out. I start here on his hip with the brighter part of the color, and then I'll drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it out, drag it out, drag it out, and like that. See. That way, you get a little bit of variation in the color. And it looks like, hey, his, uh, his pants are kind of soiled, but yet you can see that they were, when they were brand new, they were nice and bright white. So, that's where we're going with this. And the more you do it, the more of a knack you will get doing it. And that's basically it. And just work your way down the line of troops and I'll come in and do a little highlighting with the red. Then I've got a much lighter blue and I will basically almost, I'll do a dry brush with this. I'll actually get it on my brush, a little bit of paint on my brush and I'll come in with my paper towel. I'll get just a little bit off on this and then I'll come back and do 
uh, the highlighting of the feathers, uh, like the ribbons, the ribbons on their pants and whatnot. So you get that dark undertone with the darker wash down in the recesses here. And then I'll come in and we'll just faintly pick up these outer layers of the uh, of the feathers uh, just like I did with my gunman over here. And I'll show you them again just so we can point that out. So you can see the dark and then I did the light blue almost just a really light outer coat of the feathers to try to really bring out the the depth of those feathers and you can see how I did the different variations of the white so it looks like his shirt's dirty but yeah you can tell that the shirt was good and white as part of his uniform so uh, it's a great technique I've just picked it up over the years obviously watching other videos out there and just uh, you know just uh, trial and error so uh, if you're just getting started stick with it this isn't a hobby if you're like I said you don't have patience you like to rush do a quick job you know some guys will just slap some paint on the miniatures and they'll never you'll never be uh, you know, you'll never be happy with those miniatures and just slow down take your time you're not going to get an army painted in a couple of days it's going to take a it's going to take some time but over time you know I've got tons and tons of armies painted flames of war armies warhammer fantasy armies I've got Warhammer armies that I've just built and built over the years of just, uh, you know, painting away bit by bit. And these guys that I'm painting right now, guys, they've been, been on my paint table for two years. Uh, so, you know. I get carried away, I end up, I, one of my new, uh, one of the rules that I like to try to do is don't buy anything new till I finish what I've started. Uh, that's kind of easy to say sometimes, but you can see how I'm kind of dragging that. I'm starting with the bright up at the top here, and I'm dragging it down, dragging it down, picking up the highlights on his pants here. Just a tiny bit, you don't want to... You know, I get a lot of paint on the t tip of the brush, just a little bit. Just kind of do a little bit of highlighting. I want this to pop. You know? I want this to pop. Um, working my way around here by the leg, I'm going to put just a, a little bit here on his leg. By the time I get a little dot of paint off of the tip, and I just drag that drag it out, drag it out, like I say, then it really blends it with the darker colors. It really makes it pop, like right here on his crotch, right now where it's uh, white and red. I want to make that pop. I want to make that contrast between the white and red. And like I said, I'll come back with red, because this is kind of dark now that it's had a wash on it. And I'll touch up the red the same way I'm doing with this white. And it really gives you that amazing contrast that makes your miniatures really stand out. So there you go. That's kind of my little technique I wanted to show you. Especially, like I said, if you're just getting into this hobby. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's part of the hobby. The gaming is a big part of it, obviously, but also the modeling is a big part of it. And once you get really good at it and really get your skill level up, and I, mine aren't as high as, you know, you, you see some of the, the paint, uh, paint jobs in some of these magazines, and it's just the, the, that's the ultimate level you can go to. Um, and it really, at that point, it becomes an art form. I mean, there's some of these miniatures out there that, Right, competitions and whatnot that uh, they're like works of art and that's where I'm headed with this with the dioramas I really believe that the dioramas are really a, a piece of art it tells a story um, and it's something that you can hand down you know that's something that's just not static uh, like just a tank model you know, it's nice to be able to do 
a setup where you're basically uh, telling a story, telling a little tale. So there you go, guys. I'm just going to keep right on trucking through with this white. Then I'll do my red. Then I'm going to look each one of the models over so I can already tell, like, this guy's got a couple little pouches, right, like a water pouch. Some things that are still black back here from my primer. And I'll have to go in with some leather paint and touch that up. And you can see also, too, you got to remember, too, like, when I'm first putting this on, it seems really bright, but as it dries, as that white dries, so I want to get, the, like, the folds of his of the arm there, drag it down, drag it down. So I'm not, you can tell I'm not doing under the arm, I'm just doing the top layer of the arm. And uh, as it dries it, that still darkens a little bit, but then I'm getting that ridiculous looking contrast. Um, that really makes it stand out. Alright, hope that helps guys. And if you're getting into this, just getting into this hobby, stick with it. Don't give up. You'll be pleased with the results. And uh, the Germans have a saying, alles Anfang ist schwer. And that just means every beginning is difficult. It's not, if it were easy, everybody would do it. So there's where we're headed. I'm going to get these guys done. I'm going to make some more bases, glue on bases, and we can get that uh, Spearman unit finally off of my painting table. All right, guys, have a great one. See you next time.